All right, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are down below for anybody who wants to support me, like always. Only do so if you actually can. Uh, another monthly update on the U.S. drought situation out in the uh, the western third of the U.S. or so. Uh, various reservoir and river levels, as you can likely see uh, from the current drought monitor map. It updates every uh, week or two, but as of the most recent one, there has been some reduction in the drought level in some areas to a degree. Uh, primarily Arizona and uh, specifically uh, more southern Arizona. As for a number of days over the uh, last couple weeks, they have had a few rounds of uh, getting hammered by thunderstorms. So that has alleviated uh, some of their drought condition. However, it was still not enough to obviously like completely refill all of the uh, reservoirs in the area. For the Phoenix, Arizona area specifically, where uh, most of the state's population is, Phoenix gets its water collectively from a number of surrounding reservoirs in the area, and they go on a uh, total collective percentage full. And since late spring, they'd been on their way down from the upper 70s down into the 60s, and as of the last update, uh, they were down to 66 or 65% full collectively. Whereas a year ago, at that time, back in July, uh, they were up in the 90s. Now, after it's been another few weeks, uh, those thunderstorms did refill the Arizona reservoirs a bit. They went back up by a few percentage points, up to 68. However, they however they didn't uh, refill past that, and now they've slipped back down a little bit, down to 67%. Whereas at this time last year, uh, they were still collectively up in the 80s. Now for the major Colorado River reservoirs, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. Lake Mead being the largest and uh, being the water supply, not just uh, for the... Las Vegas area where most of Nevada's population is, but also uh, supplying 18 or 19 plus million people of the Los Angeles area plus uh, several more across Southern California as a decent chunk of uh, that water for that region is brought through pipelines several hundred miles from the Colorado River through the uh, aqueduct system. And the pipelines intake system is at some smaller reservoirs on the California Arizona border. So Lake Mead, constantly uh, releases extra amounts of water to flow downriver to make sure that those reservoirs down there stay full. And upriver from Lake Mead is Lake Powell, which constantly releases extra water to flow downriver to try to keep Lake Mead from dropping down too fast. And these reservoirs, just like most others and most rivers, have seasonal uh, cycles and patterns that you can see in charts throughout the year. And most of the individual reservoirs are measured on the uh, elevation feet scale. So it's measured by how high the surface of the water currently is above sea level. And Lake Mead, if it were full, aka if this was several decades ago in the past, uh, Lake Mead would be up at about 1,220 or 1,225 elevation feet. Over the course of the last couple of decades, however, it has uh, gradually lost more and more water each year than it uh, regains during its recharge season and has slipped all the way down under 1,100 elevation feet. And last year uh, lost a decent bit from 1,098 or so down to uh, about 1,082 or 1,081. And during its uh, recharge or refill season regained uh, only about five or six. I got up to like 1,086, 1,087. And uh, once this year's uh, decline season started, it dropped a fair bit of way again and got all the way down under 1080, down to 1070, and now has made it down to 1,068 uh, feet of elevation water level, where it is kind of leveling off in both uh, that area itself and also uh, further up along the river. Uh, there have been some thunderstorm episodes over the last few weeks. Now keep in mind, uh, lakes and reservoirs are not uh, perfectly like rectangular pools filled with water. They're natural indentations in the land or flooded valleys or flooded canyons. So they get narrower and narrower the further down you go. So ultimately each foot of water level further down contains volumetrically less uh, water than the foot above it did. Now like me does still have a bit of ways it can go. Uh, it can get all the way down to 915 elevation feet uh, before it passes below the uh, the dam's intake system. Meanwhile, upriver from Lake Mead, as we mentioned, Lake Powell declined over the course of this year at first from about uh, 
3,580 elevation feet down towards 3,560, and then it hit its usual uh, recharge season, and it did not really regain all that much, whereas normally on a, a given year it would usually regain a bit, like over 10 at least. Uh, this year it regained 3, and then lost those pretty quickly, and has kept going and is now down to about 3,553 elevation feet of water level, which is quite a decent way down from uh, the once full Lake Powell a long time ago, like Lake Mead. Uh, Lake Powell at full would be at 3,700 feet. The absolute lowest point in the lake is uh, somewhere uh, under 3,200 elevation feet. Now over to the west in the state that's using all of this water, California, where the phrase California dreamin' needs to be replaced with California burning. Now water in California gets distributed uh, throughout a uh, aqueduct system, moving water great distances uh, from uh, typically the northern regions of the state to the cities, and especially down to the uh, southern part of the state, where there is not naturally as much water. One reservoir being the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, which uh, primarily sends most of its water off uh, to San Francisco. The Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, uh, when full, is at about 3,806 elevation feet. If it were completely empty, it would be down at 3,500. Uh, where the dam intake system is, at what level, I don't know. And normally, under non-drought conditions, uh, Hetch Hetchy does uh, pretty well each year. It uh, typically gets drawn down towards like 3750 or so, and still ends up uh, replenishing completely back to full each refill season. However, last year it did not do so great. Hetch Hetchy last year went all the way down, almost uh, right down to 3700, and it did manage over its refill season to regain a fair bit of that. Uh, it still came up 20 feet short, however, instead of a full 3806, it only refilled up to 3786, and since then, over the last uh, couple months, has been on its way down. For the moment, it's uh, lost a total of 20 feet so far, and is now down to 3766. The Sacramento River flowing down into the Sacramento area for the uh, majority of this summer so far has been uh, decently below its normal level. Primarily it was hanging out at around 160 cubic feet per second or so, whereas normally at this time of year it would be up at 220, and has dropped it from uh, 160 down towards uh, between 140 and 150 cubic feet per second. And if you follow the Sacramento River, you will find Lake Shasta, which is a decently enormous reservoir, and one that has lost almost 70 feet of water level this year already. Normally, if Lake Shasta were full, it would be at 1,067 elevation feet. If it were completely empty, it would be down at uh, the lowest part of the lake is 549, already down at 980 to begin with, and it uh, has declined now just over these last few months all the way down to 916 or so. Also down in the Sacramento area, the American River has uh, still been hanging out at about a thousand cubic feet per second. In comparison to normally, it would be up at about three thousand cubic feet per second of flow rate. And if you follow the American River back up, you will find Folsom Lake. Folsom Lake, normally if full, would be at 466 elevation feet. Uh, completely empty at the lowest point would be 216. Uh, where the water intake system is, uh, which level, I don't know. But once it started its decline uh, for this year's decline season, it was already down at about 400 elevation feet. And uh, the last drought update we did in July, it had dropped down to 380. Uh, now, a few weeks later, it has slowed down its decline a bit and uh, only dropped down to 375. Further down south, the San Joaquin River, normally would be at about 400 cubic feet per second of flow rate at this time of year. Uh, it's been all the way down at only 40 instead. It did have a little blip recently where it went up to about 70 after uh, there were uh, there was some rain and there were some thunderstorms in uh, its general region on a couple days, and it looks like they may actually be withholding water as uh, they've kind of gone flat at about 5.03 after declining down from 5.20, 
and uh, they've been at about 503 for the last several weeks. And also in Southern California, uh, some water is taken from the small Owens River, which normally has a low flow rate already, uh, kind of a lazy, leisurely 270 cubic feet per second. Most recently it was uh, sticking around between 60 and 65, however now it's slipped down to between 55 and 60. Lake Orville, the, uh, the big newsmaker most recently. We had a specific video about that a couple days ago. Lake Orville is one of the, uh, the multi-sourcing reservoirs. Its water goes off to everywhere throughout the state. And a full Lake Orville would be at about 900 uh, elevation feet. However, by the time its decline started uh, during the dropping phase this year, it was already down at only 730 or so. And since then, uh, just over these last few months, it has lost it has lost almost 100 feet and is uh, now down towards 638 elevation feet of water level, which is below the 640, which is the, uh, the threshold limit, which is the threshold limit uh, for the dam intake system. Once it uh, drops below that level, the hydroelectric uh, dam can no longer operate. And another multi-sourcer uh, sending its water off everywhere throughout the state which uh, might become the next Lake Orville, is the San Luis Reservoir, which, if full, uh, would be at 544 elevation feet. If empty, uh, the lowest possible point is at 274. Where the, uh, the dam intake system is, I don't know. San Luis Reservoir did go through a decent recharge season. It uh, got from 440 up to 470 elevation feet. So it was already more than 100 feet down. It regained 30 feet, uh, got back up to 470. And uh, now, however, just over the, the course of these months, it has already almost lost another 100 feet and is now down at about 379 elevation feet. And one other, the new Bullard's Bar Reservoir, if full, would be at 1,956 elevation feet. And most of the lake or the reservoir is between 250 and 300 feet deep, except for apparently right behind the dam. Behind the dam, it drops down. So most of the reservoir would be empty if the uh, water level dropped down to about uh, either 1706 or as far down as 1656. And New Bullard's Bar uh, was already a decent bit down by over 100 and uh, almost 120 feet. It it was down at 1,840. It regained about 20 feet during its recharge season, got up to 1,860, and now has been on its way uh, further down and has uh, almost lost another 40 and, and is presently down uh, just under 1,823 elevation feet. Okay, finally leaving California behind and uh, skipping over Arizona to New Mexico, where you have uh, the U.S. portion of the Rio Grande River as it does originate in the U.S in uh, Colorado and flows down through New Mexico before it then goes on to form the uh, U.S.-Mexico border and at its measuring point near Albuquerque, New Mexico. Normally at this time of year it would be between 500 and 600 cubic feet per second of flow rate and uh, instead it's been pretty low. It's been down more around 200 except for just recently in the last couple weeks it has uh, been up closer to 500 instead uh, because of the uh, the rounds of thunderstorms that were mentioned earlier as New Mexico did have a fair bit of them as well. However, those have uh, been gone for a few days and the river has been slipping back down and is back down to only 250. The Pecos River, which empties into the Rio Grande River, uh, did benefit uh, from the rounds of thunderstorms uh, a bit a bit much, actually. It would normally at this time of year only be at about 80 cubic feet per second, and uh, the rounds of storms and rain actually pushed it recently up to about 200 or higher. However, now it's been slipping back down towards normal and is at about 120 or 130. Up in Utah, uh, the Salt Lake City area, where basically all of Utah's population is, its water uh, comes from a number of rivers and creeks flowing down the mountains, and those rivers are fed by their source reservoirs. So looking at uh, those reservoirs levels, the Pine View Reservoir 
does not hold uh, all that much. Its uh, full level is at about 4,900 elevation feet. Its empty point, the, uh, the lowest point in the lake, is about 4,817. And like many of the others, it did start uh, already depressed. Having regained its losses from last year up to about 4,882 elevation feet before beginning its uh, decline for this year, from which it has uh, gone down another 20 feet or so, down to 4,862. Meanwhile, another, the Deer Reservoir, has for the moment uh, stopped declining. It was uh, benefiting from some really localized uh, rain and storms it got. And it's been on a decline uh, this year so far from 5,401 down to now stopping at about 5,391. Whereas if it were full, it would be up at 5,417. And its absolute lowest point is down at 5,279. And the Jordanelle Reservoir also uh, is given in percentages. And uh, when we did the last episode a few weeks ago, it was down at 67% full. And it has uh, continued dropping, and as of now is at about 61.5% full. And finally, the uh, Pacific Northwest supplying quite a bit of Oregon is the Williamette River. And uh, when we first looked at it, it was at 23% uh, below its normal levels. A few weeks back, when we did the most recent episode, it had, uh, it had recovered a bit and was only 19% below its normal levels. However, now it's uh, gotten back to being a bit worse and is back down to now 24% below its normal levels. Meanwhile, the Columbia River, the massive river forming the border, of uh, Oregon and Washington, or at least most of the border. You can see uh, decent fluctuations in the flow rates over the course of each day as each high tide period, as the ocean pushes back against it, uh, slows it down by a decent bit. But running from the uh, high points, the Columbia River, when we last looked, was at uh, fluctuating between 17 and 18,000 uh, cubic feet per second, whereas at that time of year, back in July, it would normally have been uh, closer up to around between 25,000 and 35. All well, now, however, it has uh, been dropping further and is uh, down to being around between 14 and 15,000 cubic feet per second. Granted, at this particular time of year, the, the usual average itself is, is also normally lower uh, between 16 and 17. And that's it for this one. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. If you're new, I do podcast and data episodes about energy, mining, water, lumber, uh, all kinds of critical societal stuff. So I have plenty of stuff for you to watch or listen to if you want. PayPal and Patreon links are both down there. If anybody wants to support me, only do so if you actually are able to. May God bless and protect you all and grant replenishing rain to those who need it. And I will see you all around next time.